Hello everyone, it's Doodle again with another AutoCAD tutorial, and this one is to answer a question that I've seen around lately. And I've actually seen this question asked around for years now, and only recently did I discover the full answer to it. I had some cheats and shortcuts of my own that worked, but they were a lot more work. So I'm going to show you what I have found recently to be the slightly better answer to the question, how can I get multiple visibility states in a single dynamic block? Of course, you probably are already aware that the short answer is you can't. You can only have one actual visibility state. But if you want to use some lookups and you want to do a lot of work on the back end for it, you can make it act and look just like it has multiple visibility states, which is probably what you really wanted in the end. So how am I going to make that work? I'm going to use this little setup right here to show you guys how to make this work. It has an option for triangle and square on the left hand side of this line and on the right hand side it has circle and pentagon. This is just an example. I can't really think of any actual use for this particular block but it's going to be a little easier to follow along with and hopefully after you watch this, you can make a dynamic block of your own that acts as though it has multiple visibility states and is useful in some way. So what do we have to do to get this going? First thing we have to do, of course, is we have to make a block out of our objects. So let's type bmake on the command line, and I'm going to call this just test block uh, or blockoke or block slash slash. Now let's just actually type that correctly if I can. Boy, I can't seem to type at all today. That's not going to bode very well, is it? So pick point. I'm going to pick the middle of this line. That's going to probably be the simplest. Select all of these objects, and there we go. We have ourselves a block. Of course, in order to add all the parameters and actions, we have to go into the block editor. So I'm going to click it up here, but you can type B edit while you've got it selected, or pick it from the drop down list, whichever way you want to do it, of course. So what do we need? We need first our visibility states. So go over to your block authoring palette, go up to your parameters, find visibility, click it and put it down anywhere. It doesn't actually matter exactly where it ends up going because we're going to make it invisible in the very end. Yes, we're making our visibility state invisible. Whoa. Okay. So now we actually need to name and set up all of our visibility states. I don't want to use visibility state zero. I want to use something that I can look at it and know what it means. Now this might be anywhere from a little more difficult to impossible with a block that you're actually going to use. You might have to type things out a little bit longer. Come up with some system that works for you because this can get a little bit more complicated and a lot more complicated if you've got lots and lots of different visibility states that you're working with. And by the way, how many visibility states do you need? Well, you need to take a look at how many possible visibility states you have for each little chunk. So for this sample block, the left hand has two states, triangle or square. The right hand has two states. It has circle and pentagon. You multiply two by two and you get four. That's how many possibilities altogether. Of course, you can see this can add up quite a bit if you've got uh, multiple sections of visibility. If you had four different ones, and they all had two options, that would be two times two times two times two, which is four times four, which is 16. And then it can go even higher from there if you've got a lot more complexity. So this can take quite a while to set up, and it's really something you want to use for only the most useful blocks to have multiple visibility states, because it could, it could be hours put into this, honestly if you're making something really complicated. It's not gonna be that long for this one because like I said, two times two equals four, not horrible. So I'm gonna go in order from smallest number to largest number and primarily from left to right. So uh, for example, three dash zero because the circle, is it zero size, is it infinite size? Well, zero is the one that's easier to type and works with all the other numbers easily. So I'm just gonna say zero. We don't need to get into a mathematical debate here. We're just going to say it's zero, or you can say it's O because it looks like it, whatever. 3-0, that is going to be the first visibility state. The next one is going to be 3-5. Then the third visibility state will be 4-0, and the final visibility state will be 4-5. Now, you can probably infer what these mean if you look at them. 3-0 means 3, triangle, dash 0, circle, 
4-5 means 4 square dash 5 pentagon. So it's all the combinations of how this block can look in the end. There, now the exclamation point telling us that our visibility was not completely set up went away. Now we move on to the second state, uh, second step, sorry, and that is assigning all these objects to the visibility states as we want to have them. So let's go up to our very first one. 3-0 means triangle and circle, which means we don't want to see this square and we don't want to see the pentagon. So I will select those and hit the button to make them invisible. And let's go through the other ones and do the same thing. 3, 5 means no square and no circle. 4, 0 means no triangle, no pentagon. And 4, 5 means no triangle, no circle. So we've got our different states. Let's go ahead and close the block editor. We're going to get the prompt to save the changes to test block. And let's test out what we've got so far. It's always good to test as you go, because if you make a mistake somewhere in the beginning, it could mean redoing all of your work down the line. So if you've got to a point where things should work with what you've got, go ahead, close it out, save it, of course, or save it first and then close it out if you just want to be, you know, correct about things and give it a test. So we've got three, zero, three, five. We've got four, zero, and we've got four five works just the way you would expect of course we're not at the end yet because we've got a single visibility state here that controls the whole thing and we want to make this a little bit simpler for the user and so we're going to go back into the block editor and we load it back up and what do we need to do next what we need to do next is where it gets to be a little wonky um, we have to have some extra parameters that are fake parameters in order for everything to coordinate with each other inside of the dynamic block because when we add our lookups that control the visibility they have to work with other parameters in the block they can't just work with the visibility state directly um, and coordinate with the other lookup we're going to have to have one master and in order for those coordinations with the master we're going to have to coordinate with other stuff yes it sounds complicated but i think when i do this you will be able to follow what i'm doing so the first thing I need to do is I need to create some fake things to move. Now, you could also use points, but I'm going to find this so much simpler to follow that I'm going to do it this way. Um, what I meant was I'm going to use linear parameters. Uh, you could use uh, point parameters or polar parameters or even XY parameters and possibly rotation as well. It just has to have the ability to set it up so that it has the same number of possible states as you want to be options in the particular dropdown. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is for this one, I'm going to have that link to the left side and this is going to be a three by default. And I'm gonna turn this into a list type, which means I have to pre-program what the possible values are for the parameter. It starts with three because that's what the actual distance is as drawn. And I'm going to add four. You notice that that matches up with what I used for the left hand side's values in our visibility states. And it also matches up, of course, with the number of sides on those objects so that I can keep everything straight in my head. If you didn't need to keep everything straight in your head, if you didn't want to, you could use those other parameters and you might be able to save yourself some of the fake drawing and fake moving that I'm going to be doing here. But I find that if you can keep things simpler in your head versus keeping things simpler on the drawing, the keeping things simpler in your head is going to be the way to go. So I've got that one set up and let's set up the next one as well. Do the same thing over here. And I'm going to draw this one from the center five units away. And I'm also going to make this into a distance type of list. And I'm going to go ahead and add a zero. And that corresponds to the zero I used for the circle and the five that I used for the Pentagon. Now let's go ahead and give these a name. Again, this is just going to help keep things straight in my head. This is the fake parameter that's controlling what goes on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna call it left. And betting you can guess what I'm going to name this one. Yes, center, no, I'm kidding, right. That one's named right, and now what do we do? We need to assign some actions to these parameters or we're gonna get this exclamation point, and when we save the block, any insertions of that block are just gonna ignore the parameter because it wasn't completely set up. So assign a move action to this 
I'm going to assign it on this side because it's always the second point unless you're doing things that are complicated. Not that it really matters for this, but you know, best practices and all. So select that and the object. Oop, everything is so scaled up that it's hard to see. There we go. Uh, select action location where wherever it doesn't matter. We're not going to actually see it. Let's do the same for the right, this side. Zoom in so I can actually see that tiny little circle I drew and wherever, it doesn't matter where it goes. Um, you will notice that I have the old school style icons for everything here. Uh, and in newer versions of AutoCAD, they look a little bit different. So I'm going to type B action bar mode. That's the system variable that controls this. The default value is actually one and they would look like this. Uh, I'm going to change that back in a little bit and you will see why, but I can leave it for now since at the moment it does not matter. So I've still got the exclamation points here because I've got a grip over here that doesn't have anything associated with it and the same on the other one. But I can just go ahead and change these both to number of grips zero because they're fake. They're just working in the background. They're just doing a little bit of uh, work for us in the dynamic block. They're not actually something that the user is ever going to mess with directly. In fact, that means that I can also change show properties to no. So now that they have uh, actions that match up with the number of associated grips, everything is good to go. I'm not getting any warnings and those both work. Good. So what is the next step to take? The next step is I'm going to have to, well, I guess the next step would be to make these invisible on all the layers because currently they are uh, they're invisible on all the other layers except the one that I was currently using. So that makes this a little bit simpler. I just have to select them once and make them invisible. And then we will move on to adding the lookup parameters, which are going to look the same as the visibility dropdown, and they are going to act as the visibility dropdowns. So I'm going to add a lookup parameter over here and over here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and move those down a little bit like this. Um, before I forget, uh, I want to change this visibility mode so that hopefully they will be, oh, nope, they're not. I need to make these visible in all my layers. If I'd have done the visibility mode change before adding these, I wouldn't have had to go do this. So it might be smart of you to do that as well, but whatever, it's not a big deal to fix for now. Always something to keep in mind. Anything that you're going to want to interact with all over your block, once you've assigned visibility states to your block, make sure they're going to be visible every time you need them. Or you're going to make some changes to your block using those, and then they're going to disappear and you can't access them anymore. So that's not really all that helpful. Okay, we have some lookups here. What we're going to do with these lookups is associate them with the parameter that we made, that little fake parameter that's doing some work. So I'm going to have the left that has the options of three and four. Three is going to be for the triangle. So I'll type triangle over here and I will type square for the four. And I wanted to type squirrel for some reason. It's not really a squirrel. It's a square. I get the two confused. It's, it's really easy to do. Uh, allow reverse lookup is what we want to show up. That allows you to control things the other way around instead of just doing a lookup. And uh, when everything's a one-to-one -one match, you should get that showing up. And that did indeed happen. Good to go. Click out of there, OK. And now we're going to do something similar for this lookup. We're going to add the input property for the right. And that gives us options of 0 and 5. 0 was for the circle, which I wanted to spell with an S. I guess it's just one of those days. At least I didn't think it was an animal. And the 5, which is the pentagon. Again, we get the allow reverse lookup, which means everything's going fine. Click OK, and we're out of there. Now we got to get these things to work together with the visibility state. That's where things get a little bit more complicated. And I've already got something set up in here for a double lookup, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And I'm going to show you how to create it in the first place. What you need to do is go over to your parameter sets and find your lookup set. Normally, you use the lookup set, you get a single lookup and a single lookup table, or single lookup action and a single lookup table, which is its action. Uh, we actually need to get two lookup actions along with our lookup parameter. So what we do is we copy the original one. You could just edit it, but then you'll never be able to get the normal one, and 
that could be a pain down the road. So let's copy it. And then let's find a blank space on the palette to paste it. And I don't want them to both be named the same because that would be just a little bit confusing. So let's call this one double lookup like that. And right now it's just going to do the same thing. So let's go into its properties by right clicking once again. And what do we see? We see type lookup number of grips one actions lookup. We get this little icon over here that we can click on. And if we hit add, look at our action object list. Now it says lookup and lookup, which means we're going to get two lookup tables every time we insert this set, which is exactly what we want to do. Um, so now that we have it available, let's put our double lookup over here. Now it doesn't look like anything happened outside of the norm. We get one lookup parameter and one lookup table. So I am going to go back to that, uh, what was the system variable again, guys? B action bar mode, put it back to zero and look, we have two lookups. For some reason in the newer style that is in the latest versions of AutoCAD, only the first one's gonna show up, even though they're both there. So we have to set things back to the old way so that we can access them both. All right, since we've done that, we have to set these two lookup tables up. We have to add some properties once again. Uh, this one is going to be the one that has both the left and right and has our options here, three, zero, three, five, four, zero, and four, five. And the properties for this one are going to be 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, and 4-5. Similar format we have been using everywhere else. And now this lookup is going to be able to refer back to this whole set. So I'm going to add a property of visibility for this one. And now I'm going to assign all my visibilities, 3-0, 3-5, four zero four five and this lookup is actually going to be able to see what's going on in here so we're going to type the three zero the three five the four zero and the four five again we get the allow reverse lookup because of the one for one we see all the exclamation points disappear which means everything is working and now we just have to edit the visibility and lookup to have zero grips of course they are different types so we have to do this one at a time even though they share property names, they're not really the same property in the background, I guess. Uh, show properties, no. Uh, was there a show properties one for this one? Show properties, no, because this stuff is all working in the background. The only things we wanna actually interact with are these two lookups here. So let's close out of the block editor, save all those changes, and I'm gonna ignore this insertion of the block because I have found that when you're messing with some properties, on a dynamic block, especially if it's complicated like this one. I mean, this one's not super complicated, but outside of the norm, then uh, I found that they tend to not work right if you've got an existing insertion. So I'm gonna put a new copy in here and see how it works. Now, one thing to warn you, for some reason, it doesn't always work right the right, uh, work quite right the first time around. So I'm gonna do a couple toggles of all this. And there you see, it changed the right side, even though it shouldn't have. That seems like it's doing the wrong thing, but I'm gonna change this side, then I'm gonna change this side, then I'm gonna change it back, and I'm gonna change this size, change it, oops, change it back, change it back, change it back. And it seems to be working now. Like I said, sometimes, sometimes it goes a little wonky at first, but now it seems to be sorted out and we've got a block that acts as though it has multiple visibility state dropdowns, just like you would want it to. Was a little bit of extra work, but I think you can follow along, and I hope you guys all try it out for yourselves. Good luck. I will see you later.